full one if being as a psychiatrist, which is um, from his work from in the first in the Second World War uh, with soldiers and in the Birmingham Hospital uh, with um, uh, Northfield Hospital in Big, 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 Birmingham. And then the second period is after 1950 when he became an analyst himself and he changed from his interest in group to the interest in individual therapy and psychoanalysis. Then after 1960, when according to Melzer, uh, beyond end his analysis with Melanie Klein and really managed to flourish in his own theories and the creative creative production uh, and, uh, and that was until so that would be a uh, and then finally I will consider his change in the in in his um, writings to the uh, appearance in beyond of a very important aspect which is the uh, uh, use an awareness of the presence of intuition. I mean, if we can say that, like uh, um, Fairman, Fairman say that Freud's psychology was the psychology of uh, impulses, of drive. And uh, I, I say Melanie Klein was the psychology of affect. Because, for instance, Freud say that the unconscious become conscious by the change of this, from the things to the name of the thing. I mean, by naming the thing, we make the, the unconscious conscious. But that's a very cognitive approach. We leave out emotions. The introduction of climb by positions in all the mechanism of defense for the paranoid, which is going to the present position, um, introduce the importance of affect in the process of making the unconscious conscious. So I would say Klein was mostly a psychology of affect. And then um, Bion, I think, is a psychology of intuition. Importance of intuitions in the capacity to capture the meaning of the unconscious. <clears throat> so, today we're going to see the uh, the, the beginning of his work as a psychiatrist in uh, in his work on, with groups, and also what happened after 1950 when he became an analyst. Then we will work on the greed for next meeting. So read it carefully. I make a summary here. If you want to know more about the greed, there there is a chapter here in this book. I'm sorry to give him propaganda for myself, but anyway. Um, uh, it is a chapter 14. Uh, Cynthia once told me that I should really uh, uh, create a lecture on the, uh, the demonizing the uh, degree of being greed. And it's important, you know, for, for many years I didn't dare to read uh, being because I was always between being and myself, the presence of this square thing, which I didn't understand what it was, and it was very threatening. But it's, it's a simple thing you will see. And besides, after I mean, beyond himself, after a while he, I mean, he agreed that it was useless. But anyway, but it's it's good from a point of view of a mathematization of the mind, a conception of the mind. I mean, like uh, like the um, um, the the period. What was the called the period? Um, periodic table. The periodic table. <laughs> So when you put, you know, you square the mind and the developmental of thoughts in, in the, I mean, the uh, uh, synchronicity of, of the mind are containing the progress and evolution of thinking as a, a vertical axis. So we will do that in and, and the next time. If you want to know more of the grid, then there is a book by Bion himself that he wrote, the two papers on the grid in the Sasura. Okay, it's a
And if you want to know more, you can also take, well, not more, but less, perhaps, uh, 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 Grotstein book, which is a good book on Grotstein Sabbat. And also my dictionary talks a lot about the Greek in a very simple way. So that will be the next seminar. Then the other seminar, we will work on the, um, we will work on other aspects of, uh, of Pion, um, the consideration of sigma, which is the intuitive intuition. And I will leave the last seminar for an application of Pion um, thought in trauma. So, now, it is quite logical that Bion got interested in, in groups if we know something about his own biography, which, by the way, you want to read about, there are three books on biography, he, four books. He wrote three, and there's one by Blondini, a French guy who wrote very nice. Uh, but you can make up many things about Bion from his own biography, the one he wrote about it. So, Bion was born in India, and then he came to, um, to England in 1909, at the age of, of eight years old, to a boarding school where he remained for the rest of his life. Never went back to his house. At the age of 18, then he a volunteer for the uh, First World War, and he stayed there for until the end of the war. So that, I would say that Bion grew up in groups since very early age. So it is quite logical that, that he became psychologically interested in the dynamic of groups. So, um, What he observed, what he did different from other people in groups, I don't know if you have any experience in working with group. We also do when we work in hospitals. Uh, but we also, we always did the, the group by having a leader, by we being in charge, and we direct the group. And like here, for instance, I'm the leader here is supposed to be telling you things that I, I supposedly I know and you don't, I mean, this type of thing. So then you listen to what I say and whatever. But what he introduced was group where there were no leaders. He, he refused to be the leader. See, the group was going on, he would be there as part of the group, taking notes and whatever, but he refused to be there. So then he observed what happened within the dynamic of the, of the group. He said, in the group you might see 10 people and you might think they're individuals, but they are not. They, they do behave in a, in a way by I mean, by communication, by unconscious communication, as an entity. And he, he so he described two kind of groups, two different groups. One group is the logical group, he called it the working group, the sophisticated group. For instance, this group we suppose that we meet in order to know about beyond. This is our purpose. This is a scientific aspect of the group. Scientific and no scientific in the sense because it's interested in science. He called it scientific of his interest in, in something concrete that the group is supposed to meet for. But at the same time, he observed that there were other but emotional aspects within the group. And that at a given moment, the whole purpose of the group will disappear, and something emotional will come out and take over the whole group and make the people participate. So uh, he, des he called that the culture of the group or the basic assumptions. And he saw three possibilities of that interaction. Are you familiar with the basic assumption? No? Okay, he describes three forms of basic assumption. One is the dependent, which is like this. So I'm supposed to be the one who knows this about him, and, and you don't. Or like the teacher, or like the doctor, or like, I mean, this kind of kind of group, where there is one leader of the group who's supposed to know something that the rest of the group doesn't know, and they will follow directions or whatever, or, or working together. Uh, then, then there is the, a group where he said that was more common in war group, which is the fight and flight group, which is more based on paranoia. 
I mean, the dependent group is more based on the on, on oral issues, on of a mother that provide and the children that uh, that get fed. So, in the uh, fight and flight, there is more a paranoid group where there is the uh, the um, it is run by uh, by fear uh, by fear and aggression. So, and then a third group, which the leader sometimes is not as the other two basic assumptions, but it's hidden, it could be an idea, it's more related to, we call it the pairing group, pairing group, but it's more related to a messianic, the presence of a messianic idea or being, is like a, a, a very much like uh, dynamics, on, uh, for instance, in, in Christianity. Uh, or, or in Judaism, where the Messiah will come that will really, I mean, provide answers to the, all the problems, solve all the issues, and, and, and something like that. Um, now, these basic assumptions will appear and take over of the working group, could last for hours, or for days, or for weeks, and then disappear and another basic assumption could take over in the same way and then uh, or, or, or the basic basic assumption will never appear in the group or, or something like that. So it could be completely irregular. He said what triggers the appearance of the basic assumption is the anxiety that is produced in the group by the belief that the group is on the threat of disintegration. Any threat of this integration of, of a level of anxiety, feeling that the group, because the group is always on the verge of this integration. So when that is felt that it's taking over, there is the dangers of this integration, then um, uh, a basic assumption take over according to the dynamic presence in the group. Now, there are different kind of emotions. In the guilt, in the, in the basic assumption of dependence, the most common Emotions are guilt and depression related to oral issues. Where the emotions in the um, in the fight and flight will be anger, hate, revenge, revenge of hope. I refer to revenge of hope, revenge as a form of hope, envy. And then in the um, pairing, it will be the messianic hope. Now, he, he called a proto-mental space where is that when one basic assumption dominates the group, the others will disappear and what he refer as a proto-mental, a space which is uh, related to the unconscious uh, and later evolved in what he called the beta elements or the beta space. Um, This is uh, more or less a bird view of the uh, of of the group dynamics. So then we have the conception of a group divided in two group, a group that is a logical thinking uh, um, aim directed group or, or the working group scientific group, and then emotional emotions that appear and take over the group, which are different. Uh, depending on the kind of leader established with the, between the group and the leader. Um, when he moved to the, um, to in 1950, when he became an analyst himself, and then he never worked in group. I mean, Beyond was well known because, before he became an analyst because he worked in group, because he was unique. And people, I mean, it, he gave, he gave basis to the creation of not only of using group of small and large group within uh, hospital community, but also the creation of the therapeutic community. The therapeutic community, which is very much based on group, it was and, and rule the uh, the um, um, the uh, dynamics in 
in a hospital environment from the 60s on was very much um, based on, on, on Beyond's conceptions on groups. Um, any, any question about this? Any? No? Have you have a particular interest in groups? Can you do work with group? No. Just you like the family group. Like if I see a family, that's the mm. same thing. If, if groups were a family to him, he's looking at it in a family way. Like a leader being a parent, right? And mm. then, um, and, uh, sometimes the, fa the, the idea of the family itself I don't know if that can be equated to a uh, messianic. Um, you could see, uh, yeah, you could see some of these elements in yeah. the family group. Well, depending on the, on the large, how large. <clears throat> but uh, you can see, for instance, um, that the family would use a member as a depository of some unconscious, idealized elements, and then. Uh, uh, and that, you know, it could be messianic, but it could be also dependency, it could be also um, fight and flight, mm -hmm. depend. Yeah. And, and, and they can switch and change. But it's not uh, as obvious as because you will be acting as a leader, you have to. Because, so it's not obvious when you really work on a leader group and you will be observed more of this uh, element. But yeah, yeah, you can see that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I did group therapy about uh, 40 years ago. <laughs> dating myself. Um, that was in a, a hospital initially with people with personality disorders and then um, for a period with um, people with, um, I had a co-therapist, with uh, people with multiple sclerosis. So it was the basic uh, idea of uh, uh, dealing with the loss attendant with uh, chronic physical illness. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I think that both of those end up being groups with the leader. And I guess uh, what I, I, I would say maybe more like a balanced group than a beyond group. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, the idea of really seeing psychodynamics when you have a particular task. For example, the MS patients have a shared task. So to see the group dynamics um, when there is, um, you know, an element that is educative, hey, is educative, mm. it's, more diff it's more difficult to attend to. Uh, dynamics in this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but groups that no, <clears throat> they don't have the importance now as they used to back in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. So I observed for a while back in the early 90s a mother infant group and um, that was more the mothers, that there was a, a leader but more in the background case there was a need for information, but it was more to get the mothers to share what they were struggling with. And um, certainly if something hit a chord in one mother, it could really escalate. <laughs> um, the emotions could really get intense. Mm. And that's when the group leader had to come back in. I was just observing, but um, it, it could be both a positive, inclusive thing and it could also be a fright flight attacking kind of thing, depending what issue came up. Certainly beyond in the heyday of family therapy wasn't explicit in my experience at the Jewish mm. General in Montreal. Mm. But aspects of family dynamics that involved the concept of the unconscious were there, like mm. communication mm. with him, a particular family mm. in contrast to another family. Mm. But then that would depend on the inter intervention of the leader, you know, the, mm. whoever in the room, the mm. doctor, social worker, whatever. Mm -hmm. In the family dynamic, for instance, it usually could be two form of leaders. I, I used to call it, I call it the black sheep or the, the white sheep. Mm -hmm. So usually more, I work mostly 
in group with um, families of um, patients um, with problem of drug addiction, delinquency. So, mm. so there was always that contrast between one who played the the black sheep, the black sheep of the family, and the other one who. Mm -hmm. I always felt that the white one was more conflictive and more demanding than the black one. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that really the because, black I mean, one just be, held all the projections. Of yeah. The well, to be to have to behave to be good all the time in order to be. Yeah. I mean, to, <coughs> to the parents, mm -hmm. in contrast with the one who is really acting out and things like that, you know, I think it's more difficult than to be a good guy all the time than to really act out. <coughs> if there is nothing else about group, we can move. I just have one question about, you said uh, groups aren't as important as in the 60s and 70s. So do you mean as a fashion in uh, psychiatry, uh, or, or do you mean, you know, methodologically, or do you mean there's less need for... Oh, for some, for some uh, but I could be wrong because you know what what happened is that I haven't been in hospital for many years. Yeah. But I, no, no, in my I'm training, in my training, like for. like uh, since he's talking about uh, a joke, I mean, mm. in my, at the time of my training, a group was essential. Uh -huh. I mean, it's back in the sixties and seventies. I don't know how it is now. I haven't been in hospital for years, so okay. so it might be that. <laughs> but I don't hear so much about it. before. Before it was really. I haven't been in the hospital for a long time, but I have indirect contact by through patients who work in hospital, and it's de-emphasized, especially in psychiatry, which uh, is uh, uh, psychopharmacological and biological. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea of a group is a very directive word group. Period. Mm -hmm. Right? It, you know, none of this uh, other stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think family therapy, uh, in some settings where I would, because of my background, expected. This practice, maybe, were taught. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you see, there are fashions, there have been fashions in the learning and teaching of psychology, you know. Um, for instance, in relation to Beyond, um, the, when Melanie Klein produced the, 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 all of the, the phenomenology of the two positions, of the paranoid schizoid and the depressive, people misunderstood her and thought that she was talking about the psychology of a schizophrenia. And you had Rosenfeld <coughs> papers and books at that time, including Bion also. So, but she was really talking about something that is ubiquitous, that is in the minds of every, in every mind, that go through, I mean, a process of paranoid schizoid and, and, and depressive. Or the people are still making that mistake. I was reading something about two weeks ago, somebody was thinking that the depressive position in Klein refers to clinical depression. I mean, it's, it's a wrong, it's a, it, you should choose a wrong name. <coughs> because people get confused and think that she was referring to, <coughs> to depression and not to depressions in the sense of normality. Because life is difficult. Become aware of things. I mean, manic is a form of defense to the, 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 harsh, the harshness and, and, the, and the, the conflicts of life. So when we become aware, more we aware we, we become, I mean, I mean it, it's, it's quite logical that we become more depressed, but I'm depressed in a good sense, in a good way. I, I, I say that the, the depressive position is not a concern. It's like the good teeth for a dentist, I mean, you know. We don't go to the dentist and say, look, I come to show you how, how good my teeth are, you know. I mean, uh, so the present position of reality is not a concern. Our concern is the paranoid schizoid and why it doesn't evolve into the present position. But anyway, we're going into the, this second part of Bion. I think this plays a role in Bion when he wrote what I think is an essential paper, which is the psychotic and non-psychotic part of the personality. Beyond work in the first years as a psychoanalyst, mostly on psychotic patients, schizophrenic patients. And you can read that in his book on Second Thoughts. You will see that most, most of his work, clinical work that he presented there back in the, in the 60s was based on clinical psychosis. So I think that he <coughs> also had the confusion in relation to crime thinking that paranoid schizoid was referring to schizophrenic patients and not as an ubiquitous 
or because of, uh, of conflict present in all existing minds, I mean, of a, a, posi a process that the mind will go through before evolving from childhood to adulthood. <clears throat> so I, I, I think that exactly the same dichotomy that he referred to in group between the working group and the basic assumption is also present in relation to individual therapy between the psychotic and the non-psychotic. This is why I, uh, I have written about this because I think it would be better to talk about traumatized and non-traumatized, that's a psychotic and non-psychotic, because since this is an ubiquitous dichotomy present in all mind, I mean, I think it's more related to traumatic issues in early childhood than really to a schizophrenia or, or any other form of psychosis. But anyway, we will talk about that at the end of the, um, in the last seminar. Um, before Bion became an analyst, I mean, he was working with group as a leader because he wanted to impl implement in the group some of the things that, I mean, neutrality and in, in the, uh, the same position as the analyst of being behind the couch and, and do not try to lead the session, but just to make interpretations and something like that. So this is why he, I think he worked and discovered the issue of the, of the leader group. So most of the, most of these contributions in this period, in, in this time, uh, at the time he, he became an analyst, um, are in his book on Second Thought. And there are many other papers there, like uh, Notes on the Theory of Schizophrenia, Development of Schizophrenic Thought, Differentiation of the Psychotic from the Non-Psychotic Personality, on Arrogance. Arrogance is a very interesting article that um, he, um, it was funny because he presented that in, in Paris, and they managed to make a comment <laughs> and say that it was funny that Villon was talking about arrogance when he appears so arrogant himself. So, but the arrogant, it, 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 the paper is called uh, Arrogance, uh, Creativity and Stupidity. I, I, yeah, Arrogance, Curiosity and Stupidity. And uh, he say that, he uses that to refer to the therapist or the analyst that when listening to the patient, I mean, should listen to the patient like the mother in a, in, in a form of reverie listen to the child. Re I mean, with respect for the, for the patient. Because when the analyst becomes too curious about and too arrogant in what he believes in the interpretation and do not contain the projective and interjective identification from the patient, it, he acts stupidly. I mean, it would be a stupid act not to really uh, listen to the patient in a way that you respect with the patient. The, the, the situation with the patient is, with the mind of the patient is, without trying to really, because you're right and you think you're right, try to really uh, uh, um, get into a conflict with the patient but introduces an idea that the patient is not ready to deal with. So, I believe myself that perhaps Beyond discovered that in dealing with insomnia. Because when you, and I'm sure we all deal with that insomnia, and when, we are, when we are really thinking about something that doesn't allow us to sleep in the middle of the night, I mean, because I think mind is a compulsive thought seeker. So this is why it's difficult to really, I mean, get rid of this process of, as a curiosity, continuously finding something to think about. And so that curiosity, that arrogance, thinking that you're going to solve anything when you lie in bed, at the end is completely stupid. Because all what you do is to keep yourself awake. So how do you keep your thoughts? When you do that, when you achieve that, like meditation, like the uh, Zen Buddhists do, do by me meditating, you fall asleep. As simple as that. You can try that, you see. Mm -hmm. When you start to think and think it over, you keep yourself awake. I mean, you struggle your mind to keep your mind blank, and you fall asleep. So I don't know why I, I came to my mind once, struggling in the middle of the night, uh, that uh, perhaps you was referring to, you want to say something? 
Yeah, I was thinking that this idea, arrogance, curiosity, and stupidity, might be related to his uh, emphasis on listening in a session without memory or desire, because curiosity is a desire, mm. like a desire to mm. know, and perhaps to mm. um, interrogate rather than to listen. So it's, uh, uh, you see, the thing is, that if obviously there isn't a one-to-one -one correspondence, um, but I, I, I was thinking that there was some similar um, similar theme. Absolutely. The only problem is that you are about 12 years ahead of us at this moment. Okay. <laughs> I mean, at this time, it, I'm sure what the germ of that, the, the, of, of what he was going to develop later mm -hmm. in, from this paper. But at this time, he wasn't there yet. In, in the, in, in. I, I think that uh, at a given moment, Bion got very much involved with, uh, with, um, with Zen Buddhism and Eastern philosophy. Because I remember talking to Francesca Bion once about that. Mm -hmm. it, 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 she knew about Bion, because he never mentioned that. You know, and she said, well, I don't know, she said, but the only thing I know is that he bought a second-hand book of Alan Watts in, in, in L.A., and it was completely shattered <laughs> before he reading it. So, in some way, it seemed that he, he, because the question of desire is a central issue in Zen Buddhism. I mean, it's everywhere. And intuition and desire is a central issue have been there, I mean, for years and centuries in the, in the work of Lao Tse or, or Suzuki or any of these people you read about. But curiosity is essential for the reverie with the mother. Uh, um, the, so, curi so how you, I know curiosity and... Well, yeah, but you have to that? distinguish between, between listening yeah. with, with an eager ear than to be curious in your, in your investigation right. about it. Th that, that's what I mean, being yeah. cur curious about your child and just let them express themselves. That's right. Yeah, is part of reverie. Cur yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah. But, but it's, it's kind of, of, of our awareness of more than, in the way he talk about curiosity is like an active thing oh. of investigation. Okay. Now, he also said that any patient who presents those at the beginning of arrogant curiosity and stupidity was unanalyzable. Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, I often think of it in those terms. I meet some very arrogant people yes. who are completely yeah. not curious about their own psychology yes. and as a result are stupid. Absolutely. And yeah. go into the prognosis of being unanalyzed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you, I don't know how, how, how you're in, into politics, but <laughs> I always think of an example yeah, of right. what is happening in my country, in Venezuela, oh. because Chavez was exactly that, oh. that, that yeah. a guy who was yeah. very curious, very arrogant, and completely stupid. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, so, the another paper that was the attack of Lincoln, and finally it was the theory of thinking. The theory on thinking is an important paper because it's the basis at this time of what later he evolved and developed about the beta space and the alpha space. I remember back in the, in the, in the 60s once, I didn't know anything about the other time, I was working as a child analyst um, and dealing with Piaget, are you familiar with Piaget, mm -hmm. and Melanie Klein, and saying once that a marriage between Piaget and Melanie Klein was essential and absolutely indispensable. And, and of course, I mean, at the same time, beyond a peer. Because the problem was that Piaget was considered, I remember Anthony, a British guy who said that Piaget's psychology was a psychology with her emotions, with her affect, completely cold and cognitive, while Klein was completely on the other way around. But it was not a connection, you, it was difficult. And I think this is what Bion introduced. He managed to put it together, what Freud didn't do because 
Freud psychology, which I've been very much into in process, is a cognitive one. I mean, to connect the emotions and the and the and the cognitive aspect of the mind. So the the theory of thinking is a very, you should read it. You should read it in second thought. The theory of thinking because it's basic to understand many things. In, the, in, in it's in second thought. You can. Yeah, I've, I've I've got it. I've read it a few times. It's okay, like good. This is so. Good. So you want to say something about it? No. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> because I read it. Oh, how many years ago. Oh, so maybe okay. I should reread it. <laughs> and there are thinking, he says something like this. He said, uh, Bion gave a great importance to the frustration tolerance, mm -hmm. the ego fr tolerance of frustration, capacity to tolerate, tolerate frustration. If a child tolerates frustration, in the presence of the absence of the obvious, meaning in the presence of the absence, uh, tolerate that the absence that absence can change the absence in the thought, the abs the presence of the absence in the thought, and then into language, because language represent I mean sounds that are linked to a thing that provide the capacity. Because otherwise we will be like, uh, like uh, in Gulliver. What, 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 who was who wrote Gulliver? Uh, uh, Gulliver Charles. Swiss. 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 Yeah. Swiss. Swiss. Yeah. Swiss. Swiss. Yeah. Swiss. And and he he referred it to a place called La Puta, and in La Puta people didn't talk, because they say that that I mean Swiss was a a a, a guy a, a linguistic. So he was very much into the thing. So he created this place where people would not talk because talking will erode the lungs and could really shorten your life. So people will carry things, to, you know. I mean, they will go in a place in, in the market with all the things and they start to exchange things and do business, but, you know, with the thing without ever talking. So, I mean, that's what will happen. I mean, you can see that in the evolution of, 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 of in the historical evolution of men, that at the very beginning, uh, I, mean, I mean, somebody went to see a doctor, uh, brought a pig or chickens, I mean, just to exchange for the service. And that eventually was changed symbolically into, well, now you have a, a plastic card mm -hmm. that is a, it worth a lot of money. Now you don't even need that. You have a, it's my sign a, of chicken. A, 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 I don't know if you're familiar now with the E. e, e uh, uh, you just flash it over? No, you can, you can, even you can deposit money on somebody's account by by sending oh, a, a right. an oh, email. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the last. I don't know. I mean, you you, you see, yeah, yeah. You, you are a fashion already. So <laughs> this, no, this, I had a this thing is I'm moving. To me I'm moving this. fast. This is a new thing. I mean, the yeah, people can yeah. through the telephone. Anyway, so so the symbolic representation of the thing it, is it. Is the capacity, it is the consequence of the capacity of the ego to contain the absence and, to, and change it into a thought and into a word. When there is no that toleration, when the there is a, 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 when the presence of the absence cannot be contained, then the the object is a store as a thing in the mind and cannot be used for thinking, but is used for as a missile, as a projective identification, mm -hmm. to to uh, uh, to produce a language of action. So now he considered this this uh, element that he 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 gave the name of beta because he discovered the alpha first and then the beta after. So this is why he, instead of being should have been the other way around, you know, that it stores elements that are not digested will be alpha, and then the, the uh, function that will digest them and change the zone, it should be beta. But anyway, he discovered the, the alpha first and the, and, and the beta. So he gives the name of beta to any store um, experience that have not been contained by the ego lack, due to lack of, of, of frustration tolerance and not being digested by a function that he gives the name of alpha function, yes. So is that the piece that becomes very envious and attacks 
the person from going ahead? Well, what elements that are not digested in you yeah. can remain. Yeah. For instance, I, I refer to self-envy, which is better to say envy between the parts. Yes. Which are undigested elements that remain in you can attack yourself. Yeah. I have a case that's very severe that, um, that, that really emphasizes when the mother is not there, what can happen. When the mother, in the, the mother is absent before the ego can tolerate it. Of course. Yeah. So early separations, I mean, when the child doesn't have a mind, can a contain. We will talk about that at yeah. the oh, last okay. seminar when we talk yeah. about my own work on, 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 on uh, preconceptual trauma, which is what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. But, uh, sorry, were you just, I'm just want to ask, were you saying that that's linked to this, if I understood the idea, it's a really interesting idea, which I'm not that familiar with, oh, okay. of, of a part of the personality being envious of, of the itself, other part. Yeah. and you're, you're saying that's linked to the absence of the mother? In, well, in this in case, the mother, what we would call preconceptual trauma, so. in this case, the mother was both absent during the day and absent in the evening yeah. because she was focused on her son, not her daughter, and the daughter was just an observer. Mm -hmm. So how old was the daughter? The daughter now is seventeen, and um, this was going on from the beginning. Oh. But I'm not seeing so. where the envy would come from within the self. In that, uh, the, the daughter, the parents were very proud when they first came in. I don't know if you want me to tell. I can ask him later in the break or something. Oh, Whatever. Okay. It might be too oh, okay. This is um, the parents were very proud to come in to say their daughter was always very independent, mm -hmm. but they came to see me because she was suicidal. Mm -hmm. And um, she froze, she couldn't do anything. She couldn't go to school. She's an A-plus student and couldn't go to school. Mm -hmm. um, as I've been, I haven't been working with her very long, just maybe four months, but it's she is the girl's very bright and she's now seeing there's a as soon as she has an idea of where she wants to go she sabotages it and, you know why and the well I, I you know I, I think we're still exploring why but um, I suspect the the anger to her mother that got turned on herself but, has a lot to do with it but also this is, you know, suicidal is a very important element in adolescence. Any dangers they can do it like that. I know. I've, I've hooked her up with someone that's sick. Yeah. Kids, so. Because the problem is, this, you see, the, the mother is the one who provides, uh, I mean, life, I mean, the source of nutrition, and also unconditional love. So. And the father is the one who, pro who provides hope and freedom because men cannot have the capacity to contain a child like the women will do because the mm -hmm. women can have a child in, inside of them and produce, so they withhold the child. There's a natural symbiosis of the mother which after a while becomes dangerous and toxic. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you see pothead for instance. I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of the claustrum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the mother becomes a claustrum. Yet, according to Mercer, there are different forms of claustrum where the, the child is withheld uh, within the mother. But it's the father, the one who really managed to uh, uh, to break that symbiosis because the, the, the father would pull the child but would not hold it because it doesn't have in, in the mind the capacity to contain, mm -hmm. so let it go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in the problem of uh, what I have observed, very common in the um, suicidal of adolescence, is that they are trapped in a situation where they 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 try to provide the parent with with parenthood because they feel the parent needed because of the parent's own need of, of difficulty in separation. Mm -hmm. So, but to give that it represents to on their own expenses of their life. So they make that makes them extremely angry, murderously angry, and that make them extremely guilty. Mm -hmm. So they give in to that, and when they give in, they feel angry. When they feel angry, they feel frightened. When they feel frightened, they give in. And they are trapped. And then, not being able to have a way out, all what they want is to kill that, mm -hmm. murder that element that that uh, made them go around in around a circular way. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I mean, Freud say that, nobody really want to kill themselves when they commit suicide. They want to kill an element inside. Mm 
yes. that's really in some ways depriving you of the possibility of hope. And, and, and she and I have talked about that. Okay. Because yeah, she doesn't really want to. That's why she went to her mother, but she realized. So you, you have to work on symbolization in the sense of making her aware that her desire to be free. Because you see, we nobody can go back. We have to follow the stream, mm -hmm. the flow. Mm -hmm. And the flow is that everybody is born as an organized mother and comes up and grow and goes away. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that we have to sustain that. Because, I mean, so then it, nature making things easier, you have to have her not to feel guilty, to break away and move away, and to find whatever the father, because it's usually an absence of the father, who have not given her that possibility of, a, of feel, feeling good and not feeling guilty about being free. Interestingly, father, she was very close to father, because she wasn't close to mom. mom mom's Portuguese and is very much into the sun. I think there's a cultural element there. Um, but she was very close to her father and she played hockey, very aggressive hockey, to please him. And then father had a bad accident and totally withdrew from the family. Right. And this is How when, was she when that happened? This is when she started to spiral down. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's usually you, you in suicidal adolescence, most of the problem with adolescence you, you, you find out. And, Mm -hmm. An excessive presence of the mother and an absence of the father. Yeah. Including, I mean, children from the clouds, from anal clouds, from like men say, in, the, in drugs or this type of thing, or psychosis. But mother wasn't present before, you see. Mm. So it's hard to leave a mother that wasn't present, I mm. think. So, but, so but that's what all, she and I are. Yeah, but, but in some ways she's struggling with that guilt about mm -hmm. achieving her own right that she has to be, to find her life, to make her life, to move away, to, mm -hmm. to grow. Yeah, you know? yeah, I agree. Oh, absolutely. Anyway, um, so, where were we? Okay. You, you had mentioned something about the, um, being able to tolerate the absence of mother. And, and yeah, the absence of, of well, the absence of the object, mm -hmm. because it's, the, 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 the basic object is the breast, and then Beyonce say that um, the breast, the, the physical nurture and the love that comes with it goes together, mm -hmm. one through the digestive system and another through, through the mind. So when there is this, the discrepancy, the discrepancy in, in, in that, like for instance, when it is very difficult to to um, to measure, but when there is a prolonged absence that make a persecutory uh, presence of an absence, uh, and then the appear the bad object, but the bad object become persecutory mm -hmm. and produce anxiety. The child, in order to be able to not to to starve and to die, has to idealize the good breast. So the child will is feeding from the idealized breast, but not from the good breast, because the good breast is suspicious of being a persecutory. You know. Mm -hmm. So, and then in, in, in that particular moment, uh, instead of being two objects, there are four objects. You know, bad and good. I mean, good and the absence of the good, which is the bad, and then. The bad that become persecutory and the good that becomes idealized. So when that happened, Beyonce does is the basis of the uh, person being fixed more on the physical aspect of things, more in a concrete way of thinking, in an animate conception of being. For instance, suicidal have a lot to do with that. Because when you are aware that you the only thing you have in this life is your life, I mean you don't really go to I mean Adolescents do that because they're not having a word that they're a human being, so mm -hmm. they're alive. And they're alive, alive, the life is the only thing they have. Anyway, so suicide has a lot to do with the incapacity to conceive yourself as an alive human being, mm -hmm. and, not, and not as a thing. You know, I mean, we often have patients that come and say, you, I mean, they think that uh, uh, psychotherapy or psychoanalysis is, is something that you, you, you can apply, no different from fixing a car. 
I mean, you can open the head and change the cables. I mean, it's like they come in here. I mean, I'm leaving you here, this part of me, and you fix it and I come back for it. Yes. You know, <laughs> so, I mean, it's difficult for you, them to see that we don't know anything, that we're only guessing that they know everything. I mean, I say that sometimes psychoanalysis or psychotherapy is a very difficult task because the, the one who was there doesn't want to remember. And we want to remember, but we were not there. Mm -hmm. So it makes it very difficult to communicate. Mm -hmm. Anyway, going back then to the alpha function, the alpha function is a, is a construct, it's a, a mental construct beyond created, saying that, that there are uh, perceptions, facts, that are perceived through the senses and that remain stored in the mind uh, without a meaning. Um, that could remain in our mind forever, unconscious, and we could die without knowing. Or at a given moment, those thoughts that could be considered wild thoughts can be digested by the alpha function and then provide for a meaning, by meaning and used for creative thinking. So, people, you will conceive that beta elements are bad elements. No. Uh, beta elements are any element that is inside of us that we have not given a meaning meaning to it. We have not made them conscious, been aware, digested and provided meaning. For instance, all that we will see later on is a beta element. And it's a beta element until the moment that we realize through intuition and we think about it and we provide a meaning to that and we use it for the interpretation. So, alpha function, beyond say, there are two forms of alpha function. There is a conscious alpha function and there is an unconscious alpha function. This is essential because this marks the difference between Bio's conception of the unconscious and Freud's conception of the unconscious. Mm -hmm. For Freud, the unconscious was a reservoir of, uh, um, of, of, the, of, uh, of, of drive, uh, undesirable drive that are, are struggling continually for satisfaction. And this is why he said the dream are a, a way that the ego will satisfy a wish that is unconscious and that it, it, it cannot satisfy it consciously because of superego uh, demands. But for beyond the unconscious is different. The unconscious is an organ, it's a thinking organ. Freud talk about dream thoughts, but he never elaborated on that. And when Adler, at a given moment, referred to um, <laughs> the unconscious thinking ahead, beyond mm -hmm. attack Adler, well, he didn't like Adler, I mean, he was attacking Adler for everything <laughs> that he said to God. But uh, uh, he, uh, because he, he understood Adler's, that Adler was referring to the magic conception of the unconscious, which I thought, I look for that quote, the beyond quote, other, everywhere I would never find what it, I wanted to know what did really others said about that. But this is, is quoted in Freud's book on, on, on dreams, uh, other referring to the unconscious thinking I had. Anyway, so uh, Freud said that the primary and secondary principle are true but are weak because they are primary process while we are conscious and they are secondary process where we are unconscious. And meaning that when our mind is taken, uh, is no, I mean, when we are awake, physically awake, and our mind is taken by the psychotic part of the personality and I refer, prefer to refer to the traumatized part of the personality, we don't see the cigar as a cigar. We see the cigar as something else, meaning we're dealing with the reality through me, by means of projective and introjective identification. Any of us, any of us, any of us will confuse at a given time, at a given moment, somebody with our parents and whatever. Why? Because traumatized elements from early childhood are split minutely split and projected everywhere. So this is why the presence of trampons. So 
Meaning, when we think, when we are physically awake, we not necessarily mean that we are awake. We could be dreaming. When we are conceiving, for instance, like the patients in the transference, I mean, it looks like it's awake, but the patient is really dealing with us as if we were a parental figure or mm -hmm. something like that, and and, 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 and feeling it in, in, in that respect. So, for me, on the alpha function at the moment is failing, and the person is still dreaming. And when we are physically sleeping and we are dreaming, there is a part of us that is thinking. For being dreams are thoughts produced by an unconscious alpha function that is trying to reveal, resolve an issue that we fail to resolve when we were awake. And that is the concept, the same concept of, of Freud of the residue. For being red days, residue represent a failure because of low uh, frustration tolerance that we postpone and are not deal, able to deal with. And then we have a dream about it. This is what he said that people believe that dream as a consequence of indigestion. You know, you hear that. People have a nightmare because, I mean, you have a poor digestion. If you say, no, it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. Dreams are the consequence of a digestion, of something that we're not, we're not able to digest while we were physically awake. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Yes. This is very important because this is a conception of dream in a different way. We use them like that, but I mean, he's being said that that the, the, the issue that Freud say that dreams are a satisfaction of desire, it is true. But not all dreams are satisfaction of desire. And Freud discovered that in, in 1920 in, uh, when he uh, uh, when he started to work with uh, uh, word neurosis, you remember that, and beyond the pressure principle. But he never elaborated that. In, well, they were, he was dealing with so many things, I guess. Um, now, the psychotic and non psychotic, according to Bion, can change while we are physically awake. You mean in, at a given moment, our mind is taken by the psychotic part? and we are dreaming, and we don't conceive reality as it is, mm -hmm. and then it could change in the other way around. The process of how change the mind, our mind can change from the uh, um, psychotic, from the, non, from the psychotic to non-psychotic, is due to the presence of an alpha function that work, and then is capable to digest the uh, beta elements, and then become aware of reality as reality it is because of capacity to tolerate frustration. The other way around, when our mind, our non-psychotic part is contained by the psychotic, is produced by a phenomenon that he called reverse of alpha function. That according to him, the alpha elements are self-digest themselves, the form of cannibalization of the alpha element and change into element that is called also beta element, but it's a special kind of beta element that he gives the name of bizarre obvious. The difference between beta element as a store element through the senses that remain and thought from this element that are so have been thought, I mean suddenly are changed because of reverse of alpha function, an element that beside the the unthought a uh, uh, store uh, sensory perception, there is also ego and super ego element within it. And I will explain to you why. You what are you, you, what are you read form? here with, from here? Okay. While lying on a couch, a patient was coherently reasoning over Oedipal matters associated to a previous interpretation. Suddenly, she saw a little spider on the ceiling and rushed to the door in total panic. What induced a logically thinking mind to suddenly change into a state of psychosis? Schizophrenic patients are capable of sustaining a conversation with absolute logic and suddenly switch to a delusional system when the matter of argumentation changes, is that right? argumentation changes to a particular sensitive ground. What happened to this gifted patient's alpha function? 
that up to that instant was totally engaged and logically discerning about important matters. How could such an insignificant, harmless, minuscule spider produce such an uncertain, uncontained, abrupt, and violent reaction? Further investigation revealed the little spider was not so innocent that it was pregnant with memories from nocturnal sexual games with her siblings of crawling little fingers over her genitals they referred to as little spider walking. The spider had become a powerful absent presence, a negative space or minus K, which Beyond baptized as a bizarre object. Do you want me to continue? Okay. In other words, Beyond where in other words, Beyond where discriminates between beta elements that result from the accumulation of undigested sensory experiences and those secondary to the digestion of alpha elements. Okay. okay. Is that clear? I, I just wonder what would have um, result, what would the fourth, what would have uh, caused this digestion of alpha elements? Um, you see that the idea was that uh, the beta element was a sexual gain, gain right? Mm -hmm. And then um, somehow um, the alpha element, which is observing the little spider, mm -hmm. uh, is digested. And no, no, it's a phenomenon that happened in the mind mm -hmm. that that the, the, the spider is, uh, because the spider is a bizarre object. Uh -huh. It what triggers the self-digestion of okay. the capacity to think logically. So, and, and I guess... The it's like in, pho in any phobia, that's what happened in any phobia. The step that's missing for me is how did the spider become a bizarre object? Like what no, the spider in her mind is already a bizarre object. So she had a phobia of spiders before, uh, but the thing that I, I, I wonder about is what is, what, re, what is the sequence that results in the digestion of the alpha element? Well, what triggers the delusion in, in a psychotic patient, for instance? So they start to hear the uh, television and the thing that they're talking about him. Also. But perhaps this is a beta element to begin with, rather than a bizarre object. No, it's a bizarre object because something is projected from the patient. Okay. I mean, the ego is... All, all objects of phobia are bizarre objects. Mm. Because it, 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 it doesn't make sense, logically, mm. that you're going to be afraid of a little spider like no, that. No, I know. So, if you're afraid of that, it's because that, that spider, like I say, is pregnant of bizarre meaning that you are projecting on this spider that has to do with ego and superego issues. She was feeling very guilty about doing this kind of game mm -hmm. with her brother. Mm -hmm. So, and then she feared that guilt in her for what she did. Oh, so that the fear to the spider. Yeah. The spider became meaningful because mm -hmm. of that, mm -hmm. because it represented something she did that she felt that his super ego was accusing her. So there's always guilt with phobias. There's always in the, in the, there's always anxiety, but it, it, it related to guilt because it's usually it related to a super ego issue. They have super ego and super ego unresolved ego and super ego issue. Now the the phobia appear because elements in our mind are split and projected with the part of the mind that contains it. Mm -hmm. Because when we start to talk to a phobic patient, we, are, we lend them our thinking mind. Mm -hmm. How could you be afraid of that little thing? doesn't make sense. So we lend in them what is not working in them because they should, have said, they should say the same thing. How am I afraid of that little thing? But they are not saying that. They are terrified of the little thing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we are saying, so we lend in them our thinking alpha, alpha function that at the same time, at that time, have been projected onto the whatever they're afraid of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So doing habituation um, mm -hmm. uh, what's the word, uh, trials or processes with a client on something, 
Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, yeah. the behaviorists who they the use to be desensitization. Sorry. Um, what are you talking about? Exposure to spiders. Yeah, exposure to, to well, exposure <laughs> to the the thought oh, to oh, a picture. Oh, oh, that's a behavior modification kind the, of thing. The, the thing is, the problem, the guilt is still there about the brother. So where does it go? It's it, repressed. It's repressed. Behavior modification. And then it's going to pop up somewhere else. The old, I mean, psychoanalytic psychotherapy and psychoanalysis are the only process that work the other way. Mm -hmm. I mean, trying to make whatever is unconscious conscious. All of the other processes work in to the opposite way. Put the lid on. I mean, use medication, yeah. psychiatrists, they, I mean, they work in, it in the opposite way. It's to, I don't to work it. that. I don't work that way, but I had to take this cognitive course. So. <laughs> well, I was just wondering, um, you know, whether there was some, um, some weakness of alpha function that would result in the projection of the ego and super ego. It's a weakness of the ego. It's a weakness, weakness of the ego. Well, yeah. yeah it's so that's so that's why you're going it's to have. It's an ego have that they have incapacity to tolerate frustration. That's why you're going to have a phobia is because there is some basic ego weakness. It's a low frustration tolerance. Okay. To contain an issue, she could have. Cont well, eventually in therapy, she managed to contain that. Mm -hmm. You know, some people are frightened. She used to be. Now she can leave the spider over there, just don't get, you know, mm -hmm. that. But, uh, this? Yeah, I was just going to say, may, may I ask if, if I understood your question, you were asking why at that particular moment does that alpha no, function, no? Because I'm, I'm thinking I here. I was wondering why it happened to a particular patient. Like, yes. why don't I oh. develop a phobia? But here, uh, of <laughs> I was just going to say, here they seem to be the, 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 the patient, this particular context, which is the patient is coherently reasoning over eating. I, uh, because I hope... I, that your analysis was uh, successful so, yes. and, and it helped you to get all the repressed thing that you were afraid of mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you don't have longer afraid because they, they provide a meaning to it. Yeah. So your alpha function is working. Yeah. Okay, that's Congratulations. Good. Okay, good. I just wanted to take you back to this issue of um, low frustration mm -hmm. tolerance and the splitting of the breast into four. Mm. Because, you know, I seem to remember some years ago that we were talking about that and, and the continued nursing of, on the idealized breast contributing to um, greed and, and a materialistic mm. position so that the individual is focused more on the concrete than on the abstract relationship. What, what you were commenting on today was that somehow in this circumstance where there there is an incapacity to contain the absence, the presence of an absence, mm -hmm. and the infant continues to nurse, there is the development of a suicidal okay, tendency. Uh, okay, and okay. I would like some clarification. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have the good object is the presence of the breast. That's a good object. Whenever the good object becomes absence, that, and, and this is one of the biggest discoveries of Melanie Klein, the absence becomes a presence. Mm -hmm. A presence that is related to anger, an attack on the, yeah, this is Klein, attack on the, uh, on the presence of the absence, and then the fear of retaliatory uh, uh, attack from that absence. To, to the to the self. Now, that is the what well, she referred to the normal uh, uh, parano schizoid position, where that eventually that those two objects, the presence and the absence. And how do you measure that? You can. I mean, but we can talk theoretically. So, when there is a split of two, then the next the 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 um, pass to the the present position is possible. The change, the change to the event they get together from one object that is ambivalent and they go to the, and the guilt and whatever, the present position. But when the absence is prolonged <coughs> or aggressive, like your case or whatever, you, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, it depriving of, of love, of, of, of containing, of reverie, of uh, holding, of uh, 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 break the protective shield. I mean, you can use any concept you want. And then 
and this is threatened, becomes a threat, the child has to distinguish out of anger and resentment and, and the persecutory anxiety that is going because of the absence. I mean, you, you have seen a, a baby being so angry they cannot suck. You know, you have to wait and calm down and it starts to suck again. But if that is prolonged, the child will die. But then nature, in some way, induces a distinction between having to suck regardless of still or not feeling love physical or contained, the child would have to suck, because if it doesn't suck, it will die. So that splitting between the digestion of the motion, of the love, the containment, the reverie, the whatever you provide to the child while the child is sucking, and the sucking itself, it creates, according to Bion, and I think it makes sense, it is, it is splitting between physical things, concrete things, and the, and the psychological issues, between love and, 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 and thing between concrete things and abstract things. You know, because the difference between animate and inanimate it will be that, I mean, in the animate you you are love for what you are. I mean, you know, because your child is mentally retarded or is not a beautiful a, a child of the neighbor, you're not going to change it for the child of the neighbor. I mean, it, you love your child unconditionally, your child. And the same thing with the child to you, they're not going to change you because uh, you whatever, I mean, for the mother of the... So there's an unconditionality, being love for what you are. But at the same time, I mean, according to me, when that splitting remains in the mind, then that distinction fails. And then sometimes you feel that you are love, you're only, you, you're only capable of being loved for what you do or what you have, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or how you look. Then. You have people who really commit suicide. Uh, Marilyn Monroe, for instance, well, the big example of my time, anyway. So this beautiful woman became an old, became, I mean, they can stand that. But the other guy, the king, uh, the player, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Elvis Presley. Oh, Elvis, yeah, yeah. Elvis Presley. I mean, when you start to lose what you felt that was the main reason of being loved and wanted and whatever, and you're no longer that, you can stand mm -hmm. that absence, the presence of the absence, and sometimes you can kill yourself. So. So then, it's ex because there are two people who can provide you with um, unconditional love. One is the mother, and the second one? The father. Eh? The father. No. no. Well, at that time, <laughs> a very late, but the father is usually not. The father is more of the law, <laughs> and the man. It is the mother, in the free use of life, the provider to the baby. When the baby starts to grow, become a toddler, has to walk, they start to be the man, the thing. You know, you then do behavior. Uh, interfere and uh, temper tantrum that you over because I think temper tantrum represents the test of how nature tests unconditionality because you don't strangle your child when they start to have temper tantrum and they survive that you really are being sure that you care for the child for the body what the child is for you no the second person is yourself mm -hmm. you have to learn that if you don't learn from your mother you have to eventually have to through analysis or whatever you know, there was a, 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 a German philosopher who said, he said about, to the others I might be nobody, but for me I'm everything. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, I mean, because when you feel inside that you love who you are, then it, it's a different position in the world mm -hmm. than when you yeah. feel threatened. I, I, I read in a little story of, of a, a page of a book where the words, uh, become alive and uh, interact and talk and to each other. And then the whole thing goes around three words that have been underlined. And it's, it's, I, I call it the underlying words because all the envy of the world around. I mean, why would they underline? Why did it not me? It wasn't me. You know, I'm more important, whatever. So, I mean, so it's when you feel that the other has the capacity to provide you with a meaning. If somebody touch Harper, come here and touch. Oh my God, you know uh -huh. I'm somebody. He Harper. talked to me. He oh. looked at me, yeah. Harper, the Prime Minister, you know, <laughs> or, or Obama, or, or the Pope, or whatever you want to call any guy that we invest with importance, that we invent important in our mind, and come and underline us. Well, you know, so so that that memory is there. So how do you we achieve that sense of being what we are for what we are? and the other love off of what we are, that's fine. 
he does his own love of Yeah, but nothing we can do. You know. So that's is that clear now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so this is an important issue. I don't think we will deal with that anyway in any way, but that's, that's an important thing. And finally, the, the parasitic will both destroy each other. Um, like, for instance, the uh, relationship dominated on revenge. I mean, you see that in couples, for instance. All couples conflicts are the consequence of sibling rivalry. I've never seen anything different. What if what? there's no... What if they had no siblings in their family of origin? It's usually people who have siblings, the one who have, uh, mm -hmm. who have you, you, you see, it. look, what happened, we, we're talking about, I mean, it's an amazing thing of the presence of intuition. All couple, all couple, existing couple, I mean, the, the, the coupling is, 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 a, is a, um, produced by, through intuitive means, by intuitive, unconscious intuitive means. And it's based on traumatic issues. So much so that in in in, uh, in psychoanalysis there is high incidence of divorce. If one member goes into analysis and the whole organization changes, mm -hmm. if the other member doesn't really follow, it breaks. Mm -hmm. The symbiosis break. So this is a form of commensal relationship. I mean that is based on projective and trajective identification that can involve incremental growth to each other help. Or sometimes the 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 kind of interaction between the two uh, is, is ruled for instance by uh, sibling rivalry and it becomes an ongoing argument and fight like like siblings do. Um, Is Beyonce, this is what you were asking, um, Beyonce emphasized this condition and refer uh, to the presence of a parasitic relationship, like this embryo of the mother, like the patient you were talking about. Emphasize this condition, refers to it as withoutness. Withoutness. A situation completely dominated by envy that can be observed in some borderline pathology or feeling of hate are projected into the object, preventing any possibility of commensal kind of integration, as well as the production of plus K. No thinking. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's completely destructive of the mind. It's an attack and destructive of any form of creativity. I don't she, you want to know what she did? Yeah. She was taking her grade 11, started a grade 11 physics course. And she wants to go into psychology. I mean, she wanted to do that before she met me. Oh, well, she wanted to do it because of herself. Yes. And her. to go what to, to go we all we all do. To go to U of T psychology, she has to have grade eleven physics. And she convinced herself, if I can't pass this test, I can't go to U of T. I can't go into psychology. So she dropped the course before it was graded. Guess where Mark was? What? A hundred percent. Oh my God. Yeah. So she couldn't allow herself. They, it was so severe. Because to to graduate and to murder her her partner, mostly the mother, but it's the same thing. Yeah. To to sorry to. To to graduate to, graduate, to achieve yeah, yeah. and murder, it is the same thing. No distinction. There is no symbolization between. Separation. Okay, good. I was on the right track. I didn't quite go that far. Murder. Yeah. She murdered by graduating, achieving, she is murdering her parents. So it filled her with terror. So she had to go back. And that filled her with anger. So she tried again. She's back and forth. And this is the reason for society. So um, the end result could be a serious state where the ego not only is unable to neutralize the wish to die, but remove the wish to live which is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Something beyond represent as minus container contained. You know, minus, and then brackets, the masculine feminine. Or withoutness, meaning an internal object without an exterior. It is an alimentary canal without a body. It's a superego 
that has hardly any of the characteristics of the superego as understood in psychoanalysis. It is a superego. It is an envious assertion of moral superiority without any morals. In short, it is the result of an envious stripping of or denudation of all good and will continue this process until minus uh, uh, container contain represent hardly more superiority inferiority that in turn degenerate into nullity. Nullity? Nullity. Nullity. Only nothing. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that we talk about are the links. Links are an essential issue. I saw a movie that I. It's not a, a good movie. It's about religion, about the uh, immorality in in Christianity. Religion. It's a it's a um, Swedish movie. But the two things in the movie that call my attention is called as it is in heaven. As it is, you know the pray, the pray, as it is in heaven. Oh, oh, as it is in heaven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the beginning of the movie, five minutes, and the five seconds at the end of the movie, he called my. I think it's a person that revealed. If whoever wrote the script or something. So look at it. It was five minutes at the beginning, five seconds at the end. Links. He talked. Bill referred to three former links. Links are emotional links, two, which is one related to libido, or love, and another related to aggression, or hate. He prefers hate, love, and hate. Could be positive, could be negative. And another one referred to cogni cognition, which is K. So the, the three of them could be positive, plus, or could be negative, minus. The problem is he never talked he talk about K. So we know that minus K is what? We know what plus K is. Whatever induced growth, mental growth. So what will be minus K? That would be death. Hmm? No, lies. To Lo oh, lies. You're, yeah, yeah, but oh, tell yeah. me a lie where minus K is the presence of it. Presence of? You know, you know, you, you know for sure. What do you know? Well, minus K is death of the mind. It's it's stagnation. Okay, it's a thought created in order not to think. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. It's intellectualization. So it is yeah, a lie. It's a defense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a lie. It's a, you, we, we have seen that how a patient would use continuous intellectualization in order not to think. Ah, that one is rationalization. Rationalization. That's right. So that is minus K. But a minus hate, minus a, a minus love, didn't say anything. So I myself produced a paper which I call the forgotten self. Um, um, what's the name of the journal? Psychometry? I cannot remember. Uh, let me see, it could be here. Uh, the forgotten self? The forgotten self. Uh, I don't know if it's mm. No, it's not here. Anyway, so um, so I I that he referred to minus hate in H and H and L as an expression of false false emotions. Like the transfers. Okay, the transference, the transference is not somebody who is in love with us. It's usually in love with somebody else. So sometimes people get confused because they are not awake. <laughs> and then in contra transference you think the patient is madly in love with you. I remember once an analyst said one time ago in one conference said, oh, transference, love transference, I can tell you this. I look like a nice myself. Patient who are in love with me. <laughs> <coughs> and the minus H is the aggressive transference, negative transference. So that's the best example of negative links. I mean, when a feeling is produced that do not belong to the person, it belongs to somebody else. 
negative link could be related to somebody outside, but also to you, between you and yourself. What is the self envy you're talking about, which is an expression of minus h, is how you relate to yourself in the same way that you would treat it as a child. Not necessarily you deserve that, but it was like happened between our parents and ourselves. After all, we are born out of ordinary people. We might think as a child that our parents are representing God on earth, but they are not. Mm. They're just ordinary people struggling the best that they can. To be, so if they want to marry God for life regardless of what. So like Freud said, never mind how you do it. You're going to do it wrong. <laughs> Why? Well, because we are guessing and struggling and trying, you know. So that we, everybody's mark at a given time, early in life. And that, if we become that, that's the way we are, the way we think, what we do, and, and so on. So, then as we grow, we keep treating ourselves in the same way we were treated. And this is it's very important because this is why everybody is fatalistically condemned to repeat their early trauma. We repro continue to reproduce the trauma, mm -hmm. the way they would relate to the others. And so, so it is essential that we can change that through therapy, whatever means you have, in order to really, for the first time, to become aware of who you are. You know, I, t I remember a patient whose brother died before they was born, and he told me once, um, you know, analysis is helping me to become aware that I'm somebody. Because for years, I, I really related to and, 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 and acted like the dead brother because this is the way my parents treated me. In order to deal with the uh, uh, no, no mourning, no containing the mourning, the loss of the child, they have another child as a spare. Mm -hmm. and it, mm -hmm. the, the, she became the spare. So he never, I never knew who I, who, I, who I was because he was always the, the dead child. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the changing negative link to positive link is essential in therapy. To become aware how we treat ourselves. I never, I don't know if I have it here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Since you are the official reader. Pardon? Official yeah. reader. Oh, you are the official reader. Congratulations. Congratulations. You are the official reader. Okay. okay. Page. Um, on page 14, uh, the last paragraph. A 32 year old patient, the last of three brothers, remembered being sent away when very small to a summer camp. Although he remembers little about the event, feelings appearing in the transference showed that it was a very traumatic experience. He only remembered two situations, that he was always carrying a camera with him to the point that he was nicknamed the little camera, and that he had a dream where he saw a car with someone inside that was pushed away by the powerful steam of a nearby stream of a nearby river, which in reality was a dry waterbed. Motivated by the memory of the camera, he searched family albums for pictures and felt rather bewildered after finding nothing. It was then interpreted that the camera he carried had just that purpose, to make sure he would remember nothing. It was a minus camera, to photograph absences and forgetfulness as the only means to make sure something was completely forgotten being sent away in order to avoid terrible mental pain. He wished not to photograph the presence of the absent breast, or what Beyond would refer to as a minus point. Hmm. He said, I'm a minus confused. point is the present, is the place where the breast used to be. Yeah, yeah. And a minus line is the place where the penis used to be. So, the car was his parents that weren't there. But, but you continue. Is oh, is there more? Uh, I think it's more, no? Yeah. Oh, okay. At a given moment, he got curious about the real truth of these memories and decided to visit the summer camp several years later. He found the place very different, invaded by delinquents. And when he called at the door, 
two murderous dogs appeared. I then said that perhaps the picture he did not wish to take was the invasion of his memories with murderous violence because of the impotence he then experienced when sent away. The only picture taken that remained was the car with someone inside, his parents, brothers who stayed at home, which was being carried away, but not to be ever carried away. Hmm. Yeah, okay, so I did get it. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I thought I had here another form of, of uh, I could bring that next time, another, because I, I have a patient who really work a lot in that respect, of becoming aware, and he have very interesting dreams, where he, he showed that of uh, the, of changing negative for positives, but mostly um, L and, and, and H. Um, anyway, uh, is there any other thing, any question? This is exciting. It's yeah. exciting, good. Yeah. So next time, please do read this thing, mm -hmm. okay? I'll find it. And then if you have a chance, I will suggest that you read the chapter here, or using chapter 14, using degree, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, and then for the um, next, I will suggest that you sh also read from here, Chapter 12, which is uh, Listening to All, and uh, Chapter 13, All, all Contra Transference. So all those for next time? No, no. Oh. The first degree, the next time is the grid. Okay. Mm. Okay, the first one I told you. Okay. Yeah. Because this chapter here on the grid, I, I, I attempted to put a case, a session in the grid. So you, mm -hmm. it's okay. important to see that we can discuss that. Uh, and it's also present a summary of how the grid work. Now, the other two of, on all, I mean, like listening to all and all in conference, we will do it for the other. But decide what says here. Okay, mm -hmm. you read here and you read it. Okay. okay, and if you want to read more about the grid, you can. Yeah, well, could you just? Um, I don't have my glasses on. What are those two titles? Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. And that one, I'll just quickly read it. Uh, oh, you're, you're, you mentioned about Freud's uh, dream thoughts. So I'm just curious why you said it was sort of enough. To, uh, he never. Um, well, he did elaborate like uh, like Bion did. Yeah. Because Bion, uh, he he refers to alpha functions of, of dream alpha. Yeah. Dream alpha. The first time he referred, he, so before he created the alpha function, and then he changed it because he felt it was going to be confusing what Freud said. So. Obviously, look, I mean, Klein took from Freud and Bion took from Freud and Klein. So, I mean, there is a, is the same psychology. It's not a different psychoanalysis that some people talk about, like, like religion, you know, or Protestant and, and Jewish. And, no, no, it's the same psychoanalysis that have evolved. So, uh, so he took the, the question of dream thought mm -hmm. and elaborated to the point of creating the concept of alpha function. But, the original alpha function you can read in, in the book and beyond called Cogitation, which is was his note. He had all these notes that were published afterwards, and it was the name of Cogitation. So how do, how do you understand what Freud meant by dream thoughts? That's what I want to start there. But the, of the unconscious, you have the capacity to produce thinking, to think. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like um, linguistic or, or simply... like The linguistic has been added by Lacanian and, uh -huh. and the French... Uh, um, psychoanalysis uh -huh. that say that the unconscious is a form of, 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 of language. Yes, yes. They they use sociere, sociere uh -huh. linguistic and and the structuralism. So for Freud, it doesn't have to be linguistic. Eh? It, for Freud, it doesn't have to be linguistic. No, no well, Freud mentioned when he say that the thought. unconscious become conscious by changing the thing into a word, mm. you know, by naming the thing. Mm -hmm. So, but he mm -hmm. he did not elaborate on as well. I mean, he was writing about so many things that. <laughs> He didn't have a chance to elaborate, but uh, but uh, but beyond, I think that he 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 used that mostly to to create it, the concept of because alpha the origin of alpha functions related to dream, the dream alpha that he said, and then he took away the dream and then he put it the alpha function, and then and then I think he was influenced by Plato also because 
he said we um, say that um, I don't know if I take that here. Yeah. Huh? Yes. So, because he said that, um, I mean, you 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 think of Plato talk about projective and projective education before anybody else. It's amazing. Two thousand four hundred years ago, he was talking about Klein, Miller and Klein. So he was the first one who talked about projective education. If you read, if you read carefully on the seventh book of the uh, of the Republic. Seven book of the beginning, mm -hmm. the the allegory of the cave again. Mm -hmm. You will see that this difference between the people in the cave and the people outside mm -hmm. is projective and projective identification. Mm -hmm. A projection inside you taking for reality. What else could it be? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So the guy was talking about amazing. How did that guy? Mm -hmm. And you know the concept of the form. I think you have to do with symbolization. You know, because mm -hmm. the form is something that it remains. I mean, when I talk about this continue, uh, the continued form of symbolization, there is something that remains and something that changes. But regardless of how it changes, it's, uh, there is something that remains. That's very interesting. Maybe you should write something on Plato. I am. You, yeah. No, no, I wrote, a, no, no, I wrote not a, just in passing. I wrote a paper. I can mm -hmm. bring it to you. Mm -hmm. I published a paper on mm -hmm. Plato and, and this thing of oh. symbolization. Oh, yeah. oh quite nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I, can, I can bring him there yeah, next great. time. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, but it's amazing. I mean, uh, this is why Whitehead said that all uh, um, European philosophy is nothing but a, a footnote of, of Plato. Mm -hmm. yeah.